All right. So today we're going to talk about um, Bishop Bahama. Um, and, you know, almost I think, at least to me, it, it's a little bit surprising in that it, it actually applies to two different, two very, two other very different areas of halacha. Um, usually I think we think about Bishop Bahama uh, as being something that is, um, you know, a Shabbos, uh, you know, thing about, you know, cooking and malacha and that sort of thing. Um, so this is uh, the Minchas Usher, um, Rav Usher Weiss, um, who is a, um, he's a Dayan, he's, he's, uh, he's the Av based in, um, of, I, I think uh, his Saikahila is called Minchas Usher as well. Um, in Yerushalayim, um, and he brings down this this Indian um, and really sort of digs into some concepts that I think are so so applicable, right? So they're about when we think about things like kalach riyad, how do we really understand that? Um, and we're going to see how that applies um, only to Shabbos and not to other areas. Um, but how this idea of Bishop Bahama applies in multiple areas. So I guess, um, you know, without further ado, let's just jump into it. Actually, let me say one other thing is that, you know, I, I guess, you know, Bishop Bahama, when I think about it, um, growing up in Denver, we used to, you know, sort of joke about how if you were in Phoenix in the middle of the summer, um, you know, it got so hot there that you could fry an egg on the sidewalk. That was the expression that people would use. And, and apparently, um, like there were pictures, like people did this, like, you know, it got so hot in the desert that you could literally like fry an egg um, on the sidewalk. So um, what we're talking about here is that that is exactly, like that is a, a perfect case of Bishra Bahama. Right, you're not using a pot, you're not using a stove. The only thing that you're using is the warmth of the sun. So if you were to do that on Shabbos, right, um, it's completely, uh, you know, th there's no isra there whatsoever, right? Not at all. So that's what we're going to sort of understand is what that, what we're talking about there, why that is. Um, and then the applicable, you know, applicable situations, most of us aren't trying to fry eggs on the sidewalk, but what about something like a microwave oven? That becomes a really um, sort of crucial example of Bishul Bahama because it's not something, you know, the microwave works very differently than a standard um, stove or oven does. All right, so let's jump right into this. So this is the Minchas Usher. Um, and he's talking about, and, and he's actually, this is written on Psachim, on, on Masechet Psachim. So he says, in Psachim Mem Aleph Amad Aleph, so this is actually a pasuk in this week's Parsha, uh, Parsha's bow, where we talk about, or we learn about um, carbon Pesach. And the pasuk says, you cannot eat it raw. Um, and you can't boil it either. Right, you has to be sliesh. You have to cook it over fire. That's that is um, just the gzer sakasov. That's just what the pasuk tells us. We have to do for, by carbon pesach. So the gemara and psachim is saying, what happens if I boil this, um, you know, my carbon pesach in water that was cooked by the chamei tveria, which is basically we're not going to get into all the ins and outs, but this is basically. Um, the, the this is basically another idea of Bishop Bahama. So let's say the water was boiling up because I I the, you know the sunshine had boiled it, um, and then I cook my korban pesach in it. So it says in chayavim is this? It's not um, it's not a problem um, by the korban pesach. Kamosha in chayavim b'shabes with Bishop Bahami Tveria, the in Bishop Ella beur v'todosav lo Bahama v'todoseho, and just like. Uh, by Shabbos, that you're not mechayev when you cook something in the sun, um, because the only thing that you, you know, when we talk about bishol, we talk about bishol by ur, by fire, um, and anything that comes out of the fire, um, but not by the sun or anything that, any of its totos, anything that would come out of uh, the sun, right? You know, 
we're, we're talking about of and todos. Um, that's why that's where this language comes from, that we have an of malacha and a toda of the malacha. All of that is deraisa, whether it's an av or a toda, it's just that the av malacha sort of gives us the category and the todos can be learned out of the av. Okay, so interestingly, we have this idea of um, another problem of Bishel, not only in Shabbos, but a, a problem of Bishel by Korban Pesach that you're not allowed to do it. Okay, there's a third area where Bishel is Aser from the Torah, the Gam Legabe Bishel Basr Bechalov. So by Basr Bechalov, you cannot even cook it, right? It says, it says, Lo uh, Sebashel Gedi Bechalevi Mo, it says three times, three different psukim across Torah. And Chazal learned from that, that why three times? One is to Aser it from Bishel, you can't even cook it. One is Hana, you can't get any Hana from it. And the third would be Achila, you obviously can't eat it. Okay, so it says, V'gam l'gabe bisho basu b'chalav kosov harambam b'perk tes m'macholos asuros halachavav de'ein lokin alav. And the Rambam paskins up by basu b'chalav, same thing. If you were to cook basu b'chalav um, by water that's boiled by the sun, sun's rays, um, again, it's not it's not a problem. De'ein lokin alav. Okay. V'maged mishnesham v'chein b'agra shalimit zos m'shabes. And the Magad Mishnah and the Gura both learn to say, okay, we, we understand this, that, that Bishop Bacham is not a problem by Basra Bacholov, and that's because we learn it from Shabbos. So, Hari Lan de Lagabe, Shloshes Dimea Torah Shabbat Bishop, Ein Bishop Bacham of Toroseho, Ella Be Urva Torosov. So, across all three of these areas, the, um, there's no problem of Bishop Bacham. It's only when you're cooking, you know, with, with Aish um, or something that's derived from Aish. So this is where the Minchas Asher of Asher Wai says, okay, but we have to understand this. Like, what's going on? Why is that? Um, why is that the case? And this is really the source of everything, is that we have a Rashi in Shabbos, Lama Tesa, and uh, And that's where that Gemara in Shabbos is where we learn that Bishop um is not a problem. So the Rashi there says, Mevasha betodos chama patur. Your putter when you are right when you, when you cook from anything anything derived from the sun de ein derech bishol bekach. So Rashi's words are ein derech bishol bekach. Now we have to sort of take this apart and understand what he means by that. But he says that that's not the way that people cook. Okay. Ubitam ze sogi liftor as a mevasha b'shabes to kevin she bishol shelo kedarko putter kama she putter bechol malacha she asa klachiyad. Now, at first glance, we would think, okay, this is probably like any other, uh, you know, we, we know by all the malachas and Shabbos that if you do them kalachriyad, so the classic example of that is if, you know, I'm not allowed to write on Shabbos. So let's say I'm a righty and I left and I write with my left hand. I write out some words with, the, my, with my left hand. That's the classic case of kalachriyad and deraisa. Um, I have not, you know, I'm putter. I haven't done anything. It's only derabanan that it, you know, that that it becomes a problem because you know the the rabbanon put up put up a fence there, but deraisa it's not a problem, right? That's kalachriyat. So that is that what we're talking about by bishul b'chama? Is it the same sort of idea? However, aval bepesach she'ein donim bo ala ma'isa habishul ella ala chetza im nechshav k'mevusho olav and and he says, but wait a second, let's take this apart or take this step by step. By Shabbos, we understand that what we're really focused on is the activity itself. And I think we're going to see this mentioned, but the idea of Melechah's Machsheves, of, of, uh, right? We're, we're interested in how you are doing the malacha itself. Um, and that's why if I do it in a strange way, then I'm not really doing it the way that the Torah is, is prescribing. And therefore, it's not, it's, it's putter from a korban, you know, derisa. But when we talk about like Korban Pesach, we don't really care. Or we, I wouldn't think, or, or what he's saying is, you know, he wouldn't think that we would care how the Bishol is performed. The problem is you're not allowed to eat a boiled, um, you know, piece of lamb for your Korban Pesach. It can't be boiled. It has to be cooked over fire. So we have to understand that a little bit better. Um the Kevin Shins Basha Bishol Gomer, Afsha Ein Ha'ad of Chayeva, Bishol Bechia Gavna, Right? Just because once it's cooked fully, just because you did it in a way that you wouldn't that wouldn't constitute bishul on Shabbos, um, 
Why would you think that this isn't considered to be, you know, mevashal? Again, regarding the korban pesach, the atu lo yehi iser achila be pesach should be shul shalok kedarko kigod b'shinoi. Oh, haim lo yehi iser mochig beosus she nichtevu biad small. Here's our example. And he says, "Well, wait a second here. Let's take the example that we said above." Uh, that we already said that we that you have somebody who wrote, um, you know, with his left hand. Let's say you write you wrote out an entire get with your left hand, right? The mivur in Everna Ezer with the Beis Shmuel over there says that on the one hand we know that that from a from the perspective of Shabbos, if I wrote out an entire get with my left hand, I'm putter. I haven't done anything. Again, Deraisa. However, um, it's brought down in Evno Ezra, where the, the Beis Shmuel says in, in Simon Kuf Chav Gimel, Sivkot and Dalet, and the Ramah Sham, the uh, Kasher Legarish Bo, that is a Kasher Get, Afshin Nechrev Kilachriyad, even though it was written Kilachriyad with the left hand. The Mikomakom have a Get Kasev. At the end of the day, you still have a Get. Who cares whether it's written with the left hand or right hand? So that's in essence the, the question of the Minchas. Usher is why is it that you know we have a Gemara that tells us that if I cook my korban pesach with uh, bishul b'chama, not a problem. It's not a problem at all. Okay. V'chayutz b'davar ze v'chayutz b'davar yish la'ayin lagabe basu b'cholav dahar tenach lagabe iser habishul about lagabe hamizvasha lamalo yoka lav halo mikomakom. Mavushalhu. So same question. Like right? you know, similarly, uh, we can ask the same question by Basu Bakalov. Who cares how you're doing it? Once you've done it, um, it's cooked, and that re- is really the iser. So why does it matter how I'm cooking it? Okay. So are we good so far? All right. I am gonna yeah. skip this. So we're not gonna do this entire there's a lot here. I'm not sure if you've ever heard Rav Asher Weiss speak. Um he is an incredible, incredible godless of just understanding and, and having at his fingertips Kola Tor Kula. And he brings in a lot of different sources here. So um, I don't want to get sort of bogged down with um, a lot of the details. Um, so we're going to skip a little bit and we're going to just sort of catch back up a little bit. Okay. So he says, Ach, So where we are today, let me just, uh, where we are at this point, let me just bring you up. To speed, um, he brings in the Reb Moshe and the in the sefer called the Curious Sefer um, that both talk about this idea and say that why is Bishop Bahama not, um, not a problem on Shabbos? And they say because you know we have to take it back and every malacha that we learn on Shabbos we learn from how it was performed in the Mishkan, right? That's a sort of juxtaposition that we have, and I think in Parshas Vayakel where we talk about Shabbos and we talk about Mishkan. And that juxtaposition is how we understand the Lama Tess Malachos. Um, so from there we can say, well, it's how the Malacha was performed in the Mishkan is, is, is what's going to be, Asr, you know, Asr Daraisa or not. So that's Reb Moshe's um, Mahalech through this. And he says, I don't understand that. He, he disagrees with Reb Moshe. He says, He says, she says, that's fine by Shabbos where we talk about Malechas Machsheves. And, and by the way, the reason why this is just a um, uh, depart here for a moment and, and explain this. So when the Pasuk in Vayakel talks about Malechas Machsheves, um, right, that's the actual words that are used in the Pasuk, uh, Unclus over there defines or, or interprets Malachas Machsheves as meaning the action, the activities that are done. What does Machsheves mean? Like thoughtful? What does that mean? It means that what an artisan does. He uses the word Uman. Um, so what he says is that it's the activity of the artisan. So an artisan has a very specific way of how they're going to do certain things, whether it's cooking, whether it's writing, whether it's, you know, any other, whether it's, uh, you know, weaving, all those things, they have a very specific way of doing it. If you decide to do it in a bizarre and strange way, like a left hand instead of a right hand, that's not how the artisan would perform it. And that's why um, there is a p'tur, again, deraisa. Okay, 
So he says, fine, it's fine to say that by Shabbos, where we have this concept of Malechas Makshabas, and you can say that it has to, and that's, you know, back to how things were done in the Mishkan. Um, uh, so Rabbis Akiva's Mishkan. Why would we say that on by Korban Pesach you're only going to be, you know, over on the deraisa of of not eating it boiled, you know, if you do it in the same way there's on the Mishkan? Like, what does Korban Pesach have anything to do with the Mishkan? Right, that's that's the question. And I can ask the same question. He says, He says that's that just doesn't make any sense because it just wouldn't apply to Korban Pesach or to Basur Bechalov. He says, no, look at just the Pashtus of the Lashon, of Rashi. Rashi says it's not Derech Abishal. It's just not the way people cook. People don't tend to cook by the sun's rays. Okay. So we're already starting to see where the Minchas Asher is going, he's, 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 uh, his pathway is to say, um, let's really take this at, at a simple level. People don't, don't generally cook by the sunlight. And if you do something that's, that's just not the normal way of doing things, um, that's not what the Torah is prohibiting. Okay. Vodnir Nira. And then he says, let's take a step back here and examine what's going on by Bishel, which is a little bit different than all the other Malachos and Chavis. Because by Bishel, when I put food on the stove, I actually haven't done anything yet, right? Just putting it on the on the on the fire, it hasn't cooked yet. It takes time to cook. So you have on the one hand the activity of putting it on the fire, and then you have the activity of um, let's say you already have boiling hot water and I put something in it. Once I've got boiling hot water and I stick an egg in it, it's going to start cooking right away, right? So there's, there there are two different things that are going on here. We just need to examine them. Okay, the high new. Uh, right there's again that's that's the example of you know you've got boiling water and you put something in it there you already have cooking right away so so when we're talking about cooking we're talking about cooking in a normal way like putting an egg into a boiling hot you know boiling pot of water that is a normal way right of cooking an egg as opposed to cracking an egg on the sidewalk so if you do it in a strange way, like on the sidewalk, there's no Isser of Bishel. So he says, what happens, you know, is there even a concept of Kalar Chayad by Bishel? Because if I do something strange, like, you know, I try to put the pot on the stove, kalar chayad. I put it behind my back and I walk backwards to the stove and I put it on the stove and the stove is already on. Like, Doesn't but again, right? Why should that make a difference? Because the second I put it on, it's not, it, it, it's the fact that I put it on and now it's cooking on the stove. So the initial activity really bears no relevance, right? to the actual cooking uh, of the thing. You know, you, in other words, um, what, you know, I guess one question would be, what happens if I accidentally put something on the stove and then take it off before it even cooks? So I wouldn't be, I shouldn't be high of on it because, um, you know, it hasn't even cooked yet, right? It, 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 it takes time. Whereas, you know, as opposed to when I'm doing Kalar um, you know, and I'm writing, you know, and I'm writing something down, there the activity is happening right away. The malacha is, you know, right with my hand. 
Here it's a little bit different. Okay. Where we leave off? Okay. V'chein hamadlik eish tachas ha-gedera al yedei shinoi. Same thing, he said, what happens if you light, you know, you already have the pot on the stove and you light it with a match, but you do it with a shinoi. You light the match, you know, and with, I don't know, you've got it held in your elbow and you light the match with some, I don't know, some, some crazy mechanism like that, right? Again, right. It, it doesn't really matter because it's going to start cooking. You know, the, the, it's separate. The initial activity of getting the fire going is separate from the actual cooking. They're, they're two different things, two different, and they're separated by time. So he says, really, klachariyat is only applicable when we're talking about the goof of the malacha that we're talking about. Yeah, you light the stove in a crazy way. You are chayev on this, you know, of doing hadlaka. But, you know, when we're talking about the cooking, that only happens afterwards. And therefore, Deraisa, the only time I'm going to be Chayav and Bishol is when the Bishol is happening, not the second that I put it on the stove. Okay. And that's why Klarachiyad is only going to be applicable with other things and not with Bishol. He says uh, he, he saw that same idea by the Orzarua. Okay, this is another example. Okay, so he says, Well, if he said, Nira, Mr. Maod, the Bishop Beinon, um, Shamivasho, Haina Makora, home, canal, ye hear me vasho should derech levasho, o o. The Sha'ani Bisho Meshar Malacho Shabbos She'ein Ha'adam Ose Es Etzem Habisho El Hamayim O Sha'ar Hamevashlim, the Kaven Shekin Be'inin Shehu Mevashim Kedarkin Kemo, the Be'inin Bechom Malacho Sha'adam Ose Lehem Kedarko. So he says at the end of the day, it's the cooking itself that has to be Kedarko. And let's face it, for thousands of years, we have always cooked with fire. You know, even if you're looking at if you're thinking about like an electric stove, electric oven, but those were, we would consider to be a derivation, a toda avesh, because at the end of the day, what you're doing is you're getting those electrons to flow so fast, right? You're creating an immense amount of friction and the filament, right? The heating element is either red hot or white hot, which is certainly something like akin to H, right? I can take a match, um, put it right up to my electric, you know, um, element, the, the heating element, and it's going to light the light my match. It gets that hot that it lights it on fire. So, um, or a piece of paper, you could do that as well when it gets red hot. So, you know, that, that either way, we, that's how we've been cooking for, you know, forever uh, is with some form of heat, uh, some form of ash, not with some form of um, the sun's rays. And that's why um, we don't call that derech bishol, you know, and that's how he's understanding Rashi. Okay, so now let's take a look at a, an application of this. And we're actually going to see two applications. Um, so we're going to finish up with the Mindachas Asher right here. And he says, Lechora haya nira lefi derech zed, yesh bisho deraisa baturne mikrogal. By a microwave oven, you might think, or, or, you know, it seems like it's probable to say that that would be bisho deraisa if I cook something in the, in the microwave. Everybody's got a microwave oven, right? That's derech habisho today. Right? Everyone's warming things up, warming up your leftovers, your your uh, defrosting a um, you know something that's frozen, etc. Velogara memelicha delishitas haran brings an example of the Ron who says that melicha is a way of doing of, of cooking. We don't need to get into that, but he's saying that there's no difference. Like that, if that's um, cooking, certainly this would be as well. But then he steps back and he says, wait a second, no, this can't be. A microwave oven cannot be bisho deraisa. Why? When we talk about kalachrayad, that can be, that can change over time, what we consider to be kalachrayad. That can change over time. But the essence of bisho does not change over time. Like the essence of the 
of how the um, object, the food object is getting cooked doesn't change over time. And today, the way that we cook is with fire. Um, and I'm going to say this outside because it, it's, it, it's hard to sort of read it in the, in the Hebrew, but I just want to explain it so that it's, it's understood. Um, the microwave oven is so unique, and I think this is what the Mincha Sasha is saying, it's so unique that you cannot consider it to be derech bishel. Why? Because when you're talking about a microwave oven, there's no heating element. There's no fire. The, there's actually no heating element whatsoever. The heating element is the food itself, right? The microwaves go into the organic material, uh, mostly into the water itself, the liquid that's in the organic material. It, it excites those microwaves, excite the um, atoms within the food. And by exciting them, they start to develop the heat and actually they become, your food item actually becomes the heating element. So if you've got like food in a bowl, the only reason why the bowl gets hot is because the food inside of it gets hot and it warms the bowl. So what he's saying is that, I think just an amazing concept, but what he's saying is that that's why the microwave can never be derech, it's not derech bishol and it cannot be derisa because of that, because that's not how we cook. I mean, that's just not the ordinary way of cooking with, with fire. Um, does that make sense? Ready to go through that too quickly? All right. Yeah. So that's no, how we- it makes sense, we, but it's- That's how we process the, the microwave. What, what's that? It defeats the purpose of you're not supposed to cook. The bottom line is don't cook. Well, absolutely. Listen, so even if you said it's not um, a problem, you know, it's not bisho de Raisa to use a microwave, right. you're still running into all of the abundance right. of, right. you know, you, you, uh, you're turning on the microwave oven, you're, you know, the light goes on when you open the, the door, like you have all these other problems with it. Right. Um, where I think where the, where the post game will talk about the microwave oven is what happens in a situation like, let's say you're in a hospital, right? And so let's say you're in a Jewish hospital, right? You know, like, like Shari Tzedek and Yushalayim, um, maybe they'll use microwave ovens to heat food for somebody who's really ill, right? Because at least now I'm not doing it. I'm going to take it down from a derisa level to a derabunan level. So, right. you know, that, that's where it becomes, I think, more nogeya. But you're right. Absolutely. It's not like anybody's going to tell you you can start cooking in a, in a microwave. But that's, uh, yeah, but I think at least conceptually, um, it, it's, it's certainly a novel approach to understand how the microwave works and how, whether that's considered derech habishol. And that actually, I'm glad you asked that because that, that leads us right into um, a really interesting footnote. And we'll finish with this. It's a footnote by Rav uh, Shlomo Zoman Orbach. Um, in his Minchas Shlomo, and he says, I happen to be by, you know, speaking with the Chazanish, Zatzal, and So he says, he learned, and this is obviously was decades and decades ago, but he said, I learned about something new where you've got um, a way to sort of, I guess, I think it's like a heat, like a heater for a, you know, for rooms or for a building where there's no heating element. You've got like the anode and the cathode, right? The positive and negative, um, uh, you know, electrical um, electrodes. And then you've got water in between them and the electricity flows through the water. That's what creates the circuit. The water itself creates the circuit, allows the electrons to flow. And when the electrons are flowing through the water, the water is warmed and that's how they heat the building. They heat the, um, you know, the, the air around it. So he says, And that's how the water warms up, but it actually maybe it boils or maybe gets close to that, to that level of heat. And he says, This should only be a drabonin on Shabbos to cook water this way, because again, there's no heating element. There's no ash. It's very similar to what uh, the Menchas Asher was talking about. So he says, This is like, you know, And therefore it's not a derisa level. So I said to the Chazanish, according to my opinion, He said, I think we should let all of the hospitals, the area, let them know that this is a way that they could, you know, heat, you know, have heat um, in the hospital on Shabbos. 
the Heshiv Li Bipshitus. And he said very simply, he answered me very simply. The Kamosha Mevasha Bemayim Chayim Shehim Toda Mayesh, just like if you were to cook, right, you put um, a, an egg in a boiling pot of water. That boiling pot of water is a Toda of H. It's derived from the H because it was heated up by the H, right? So it's a Toda. Okay. So that, and there you're Chayiv Achatas, a carbon Chatas. He said, so too, if you're going to start warming water through this, you know, through this way that you were just describing, then maybe it's not a tod of ish, but it's an ibor of ish. It still is being produced by the ish. It still is somehow, you know, I, I'm not sure exactly the right way to translate how he's thinking about an ibor of ish, but it becomes like a child of the ish as well. Just like we are chayav on an toda, you'd also be chayav on an ibor. <laughs> because it becomes, it, it is there to be go, going to become ish. You've got hot water. At the end of the day, you've got really, really hot water. Below notes are shum ish, even though you haven't created any fire. Okay, so he said. So how did the um, how did Rav Shlomo Zalman react to this? Is this is I mean ibor ish? We've never heard of this concept whatsoever. I get you know the 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 Chazan ish came up with this. So he says meod hiflesi lishma deverze. I was taken aback. Like where you know where did this come from? And he says ve'yaudus haisabi, and he was much younger at the time. Lomer shirak harishonim. So he said. Only the only a rishon how you yecholim lomar chidush gadol kaze. You'd have to be a rishon to say something like this. Is what how he answered the uh, the chazanish. Uh, you have to be Rashi, right? You have to be the Rambam. You have to be the Ramban. So says ahu chazar veheishiv shaladato who pashut. He said no. This is this is a davar pashut. Vein srichim klalios harashba lomar davar He says you don't have to be the Rashba to say this. It's it's pashut. He says. So that's apparently how the conversation ended, is that that's, uh, the mm-hmm. Chazan Yishtel that that was still a problem. So he said, Ulam, Gam Hayom Zeh. <laughs> he says, decades later, I'm thinking back, right, on this conversation, and Tamum Od Be'inai, and it's still, how the Chazan Yish came up with this, it still boggles my mind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he says, I still don't understand that at the end of the day, we don't have ish. You're not, you know, the, the water is simply the medium, but it's also being warmed at the same time. Um, so amazingly, again, it, you know, this is the, uh, I guess, an inkling into the Chazanish. Uh, and I've heard the, I, I've heard Rabbi Shawai say when he's read this, he said uh, the same thing, like, you know, he's seeing it decades after, um, you know, after the, after Shlomo Zalman saw it, he says, I, I'm still also. Um, pretty, you know, pretty amazed by, you know, but it gives an ing- it gives us an inkling just Bederachagav, you know, who the Chazanish really was and just how he thought, and he probably was, you know, a Rishon in, um, you know, in 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 the, in the clothing of a contemporary rabbi. But uh, anyway, uh, it's a beautiful idea. Again, just you know, how do we understand what Aish really is? What's a Toda of Aish, um, and what's Derech Bishul? So hopefully that was, uh, you know, we learned something today. And uh, some, somewhat practical, at least from the you know respect for the microwave oven, um, but that's uh, that's that's where we'll stop. <laughs>